Hey there everybody and welcome back to another Blunder tutorial where in this one we're making that caution, don't go past the train line or you're gonna die uh, kind of material. The reason I'm doing this is I haven't done a shading tutorial in a hot minute and all this geometry nodes has me under the weather so it's time to do some uh, shading. So. Um, I set up our basic scene, by the way, uh, just so that I tried recording this um, already. This is actually the second recording. And I was like, oh, first we add a plane, then we add an HDRI, and I was boring myself. So uh, just so you know, before we start the setup is I basically made sure we're using cycles set to experimental because uh, the plane needs an adaptive uh, subdivision uh, kind of set up. Again, if you haven't done this before, it will all make sense uh, later. But uh, you need to have more geometry for the displacement, and then for the material, uh, make sure that it's set to displace only. That's basically all I did. And uh, the more I look at this HDRI, the weirder it gets. It's like, what is this painting? Is he holding a severed cat's head, or is there like a cat or a dog there? And what is this puppet? Either way, th these are questions for a different video. Uh, let's make the train material. So, shading workspace, haven't seen you for a hot minute. Uh, we need to do a couple of things. So this material has some bumps, it also has some like inset circles, and it has some grunge to it, um, a lot going on. So starting off with the circles, I'm gonna go to the top view. Uh, here's how I like to make circles. I'm gonna use texture coordinates using, let's say UV coordinates for now. And what I want to do is I want to make a circle. Uh, the easiest way to do that is use vector math set to distance. And we're going to say, tell me the distance from the midpoint, 0.5. And you can see it gives us this radial gradient starting starting here at zero and then expanding outwards uh, to larger and number, larger and larger numbers uh, because it's giving us the distance from not zero, zero, but 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Okay. Uh, if we were to take this and flip it with like a map range, so instead of going from 0 to 1, we go from 1 to 0, and then we kind of clamp this, uh, you can see it gives us a circle. Now, our material is going to have a lot of circles, so how do we take this and expand it? A uh, simple thing is if we have this one UV square that creates a circle, if we want many circles, you need many UV squares. So that's the name of the game. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our UVs and I'm going to scale them by, let's say, five. It doesn't really matter uh, what number you pick. So I've taken it and I've made it five times as intense. If you now take this and have it wrap from zero to one again and again and again using fraction. So instead of going from zero to five, you break it up into five sections of zero to one with fraction. Uh, you can see now we have a, a five by five grid or a six by six. Take it, connect it, and now we have uh, circles on each one of those. Uh, so that, that's kind of the key insight. So I'm going to set this to 10. Uh, you can pick the radius of your circle. And we want this to drive some uh, displacement is the idea. So the BSDF is going to be on the surface. And for displacement, we're going to use a displacement node. Connect this to the height, mid-level 0. And uh, there you go. Now, uh, for those of you who had no idea what I was talking about in the beginning with this adaptive subdivision, here's what it looks like without. You, you can see there's no displacement because there's no geometry. We'd have to subdivide and subdivide and subdivide. And the more we do that, the more resolution we have. It's easier to just set this uh, to adaptive subdivision. And uh, we can bring down this number to make it higher quality. So we have a bunch of uh, cones. Let's make those cones a bit smaller. Uh, the reason that these are coming out like cones is the map we're using is this 0 to 1 map. So it gets linearly sharper. Um, so if you look at this from the side view, each one has a constant uh, slope, uh, which is not what we want. We want to reshape it. Luckily, there's a perfect node for this that does it visually. It's RGB curves. So here's what I'm going to do. I want you to imagine that this diagonal line is this one. It's the profile. To make it look like this kind of bump, we basically need to draw that bump. So I'm going to add a handle here. And you can see how that's reshaping it. Bring this down. So again, this curve is corresponding with this one. And uh, now let's make it nicer. So I'm sending these to vector handles so they're nice and flat. And I want these to be the same height. So let's say 0.5. You can click it and literally set its xy coordinates 0.5. So it's kind of like this triangular top. It's more like a trapezoid, it looks like. And bring down the scale, but not too much. It's hard to keep it tasteful. Okay, uh, that, that's actually still too high. <laughs> uh, let's take that and make it 0.06. Uh, so you can see uh, now each of these uh, circles is making a bump. Again, we could have done anything to this and we could like add you know more details, but 
you, you get the point. So uh, we have these circles. Uh, next order of business for displacement. Again, we're not doing surface. Surface is stuff like saying, I want it to be yellow and stuff like that. We're doing displacement. Uh, for displacement, I also want a bunch of circles, tiny ones kind of cut uh, inwards instead of outwards. And luckily, we already have a, a setup for generating circles. So let me show you what I mean. I'm literally going to take all this and duplicate it. We're going to use the UV coordinates again. And then for this map, I'm going to make it not twice as dense, but four times as dense. So we have a bunch of dots. And uh, these are going to be kind of inset, so they're kind of like the detail dots. And I want them to be everywhere except for these circles, right? I don't want them to overlap. Uh, so what we can do is we can take this and subtract away the other one. And you can see it kind of works, but it's not 100%. You have to make sure this is set to greater than zero. So in other words, we took this map, we made it constant. Uh, so it's, there's no gradient. It's just saying, where is it white, you know? And then we subtract that away. And uh, it looks like we still have some intersection, which is fine. You could either find a, uh, a better number or I guess what could work is where we can make these circles a tiny bit smaller. There we go. Um, okay, so we have a we have a map, and I guess this one should be constant. It shouldn't be this gradient. So I'm gonna set it to greater than zero. Um, so long story short, what did I do? I made a uh, another circle thing, four times as dense. I subtracted away the uh, other circles, and I you know clamped it. And what I want to do with this, what I was talking about, is I want this to be part of the displacement. I want to take this and subtract away this component, uh, which looks like this. So we have a bunch of bumps, and then uh, these tiny circles are cut inwards. Now, I would say they're cut inwards too deep, <laughs> uh, in my opinion. Uh, but that that's up to you, uh, depending on how deep you want it to be. Uh, so if you want to correct that, I'm just going to multiply Again, this is a negative since we're um, going to subtract this away. If it's set to zero, it's not there. Uh, make it slightly bigger, 0.1, just a bit of an inset. Let's do 0.15. And that is our displacement. Uh, the nice thing about this is all of this, all these nodes so far, are dependent on a single UV. Um, so if I was to add in a torus or something and then apply this uh, material, Again, we need to make sure we have a lot of uh, geometry to work with. So adaptive subdivision set to like 0.1. You could see it's a bit stretched, but you could see uh, the materials on the torus. Uh, so that's cool. Okay, uh, now you could go a bit deeper and add like more layers of imperfections and all this. Uh, but for now, I think I'm done with displacement. Now let's do the BSDF, the surface. Uh, so what do I want the surface to be? I want it to be yellow kind of like this whitish yellow, and I want it to look uh, grungy. So not just one color, but kind of like a mix between two colors. The way I like to do this is I like to take a, a noise texture and make it kind of high contrast. And to make it look dirty, you, you want to up the roughness and the detail. Those are the two things that will make it look like dirt. And uh, what I could do is I can use this map uh, to pick two colors. So one of them could be so by the way, you could just hover control C and then control V uh, to do that. One of these is going to be yellow and the other one's going to be this kind of darker yellow. Connect that to the base color, view it. And uh, that doesn't look half bad. It, it looks too shiny for sure, uh, but not too bad uh, to start off with. Uh, let's make it less shiny roughness, make it higher. So it's not as reflective. It's a very dirty surface, a very bad, naughty, dirty surface, make it higher scale. Um, Maybe even more detail and more roughness. There we go. This looks like a, a very abused uh, train caution sign. People are standing on it too often, even though they shouldn't. Um, by the way, I, I know I'm all over the place. If you were to like scale this, you can see it doesn't really account for it. So let's say I make it three times larger on the x-axis. What you have to do to correct this is you either use object coordinates, uh, which will not care about it. So that kind of fixes it. Or uh, what you could do is counter, kind of counteract uh, the scaling. So if we scaled by 3 on the x, you scale by 3 here. Um, and then, you know, you could do it like that. Um, actually, let, let's keep it in this kind of like long strip. I feel like that looks better. Um, 
only other thing I want to account for is this noise texture should also use these uh, texture coordinates so they scale up accordingly. Um, okay, so we have the uh, the dirt, but I want the dirt to be more incorporated. And by the way, let me give even more geometry to work with. So we have sharper lines. Uh, I want this to kind of look more cohesive. A uh, couple ways to do that. One is we could add a normal map generated from this noise texture. So I'm using bump to turn this into normal information. Connect that to the normal socket. And now we have a extra level of grunge. It's probably too much. So I'm going to drop the distance and the strength just so it's not as intense. But you could see this is uh, without. Takes a second. And then this is with. Um, it just adds another level of detail. And speaking of detail, we could have the roughness. In other words, how shiny it is also dependent on this. Now, if you think about it, where it's black, in other words, where it's dirty, it should be high roughness and otherwise low roughness, which is the exact opposite of what we have here, I believe. Is that true? I think so. So we'd want to invert it. So now we have the opposite map. Connect that to the roughness. And now the roughness won't be the same everywhere. There will be some parts where it's slightly shinier. Um, other than that, there's not much other, there's not many other settings you'd want to play with in terms of like subsurface or whatever. Um, really, the name of the game now is just adding in extra detail. So I'm just going to add one more level of detail just to show you that it's possible. Let's say there's a bit of discoloration, a little bird poop, little white specks or something like that. Um, a good way to do that is using Voronoi texture, again, using our coordinate system. You want to take Voronoi texture. You want to scale it up like a lot. So you have a lot of these dots. To isolate the dots, we use a uh, subtraction, which uh, the way Voronoi works is it scatters a bunch of points on your surface. So really, this ends up being a bunch of tiny circles, you'll see. Uh, but you could see this is a kind of like a spec map of not specular, but just like a bunch of points that we could uh, mix in as a factor and be like, oh, for this area, have it be kind of like white dots. So when you look at the uh, color pass, it's going to be a little hard to tell, but you can see there's these white specks. To make it uh, more intense, you could just take this and multiply it by like five or something, or eight, something intense. And uh, let's see what that looks like on the BSDF. So now we have the material with some white specks, which I think adds some believability. And again, I just want to emphasize this time we'll do it properly on the torus, uh, you can apply this to any object that has a UV map. So this would be a subdivision surface set to adaptive with our material. And that's looking pretty rough. <laughs> Let's add more geometry. There we go. And uh, we'd want to play with this number until it looks right. So maybe do we want it to be bigger or smaller? Let's see. That looks almost right. So, yeah. <laughs> now now you know what it looks like if you were to take a donut and apply the caution train material on it. Either way, uh, you get the point. I just wanted to make a uh, procedural shading tutorial, which I haven't in a while. Uh, for people who haven't watched the whole thing, snapshot, this is the, uh, the thing. Um, okay, beyond that, I think that's all I have to say. 14-minute tutorial ain't bad. So... Uh, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you learned something from this tutorial. And as always, I like to promote the ever-living water bottle uh, out of the Patreon at the end of these. So there's a link in the description for where you can join Patreon. There's a, a three benefits for you to join. And you could join the 700 to 800 some people that are already there. Three benefits. One, uh, you could watch tutorials before they come out. I upload them early. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm, I'm a bit ahead, so this one should be uploaded multiple days early. Uh, there's a bit of a backlog. Watch tutorials early. Uh, two, you can get the blend file, so you don't need to make this material yourself. It will be available for you to download, not for free for the Patreon thing, but... Um, you can download hundreds of blend files because I've uploaded them since 2019, all for the same uh, $5 price. You could get a stupid amount of value, in my opinion. Uh, so check that out. And then thirdly, uh, exclusive tutorials. I have, I have a bit of a catalog of tutorials that are only for patrons. Uh, there's a few of those. You could check those out. But either way, uh, the, the point of Patreon is if you want to support what I do here and on the CG Matter channel, 
it is the most direct way to do it. It really is. It's uh, the main source of income. So uh, if you are, uh, if you want either of those benefits or you just want to support what I do here with the tutorials, that is the way to do that. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.